The following video is educational only and is simply intended to show you how video games are made. The game is not and will never be available for download. Today we're going to remake Call of Duty Zombies with Unreal Engine 5. Now as you can see I have turned into a zombie. I'm actually having a really hard time getting dates on Tinder. You know, girls say they want a boyfriend and then they reject you because your face is rotting off. It's a clear double standard. But you know, anyways, let me show you how I made zombies in Unreal Engine 5. I think this is one of my best remakes yet and let me show you how I did it. The most important parts of the UI are the round counter and the cache. These are both made out of blood graphics. Now, I don't happen to have any blood in the house, so what I did is I grabbed a bottle of ketchup, I squirted that bad boy onto a plate, I cut it out in Photoshop, and bang, we've got our heart. So I made a quick testing level with some water, and here is where I'll be making all of the features for the game. And here's what the UI looks like on the screen. I mean, come on. If I hadn't have told you that was ketchup, you wouldn't even know. Genius. I pulled the weapon system that I made from Modern Warfare 2 because it does so much for you. Wall avoidance, fully arcade animation, aim down sights, I even added some upgrades like a proper jump animation and smoother aim offsets. And yes, the holographic sight now faces the right way. Alright, well your holographic sight faces the right way, but what about that so called M4A1 <laughs> model that you used, which actually appears to be an HK416 with the ER57 bullpup up- I don't care! At all. But yes, all the incorrectly named guns are in fact in the project, but there is one gun that you dirty little rat packs in the comment section cannot call me out on because it doesn't actually exist in real life. And that is the ray gun. So the next thing that I needed was the map and I looked through my marketplace packs and I found this Egypt pack. Now I don't remember buying this Egypt pack but it's pretty much a perfect fit for a zombies game and the backstory I came up with is that you're a British archaeologist and you're in Egypt digging some crap up and the zombies come out of nowhere. They attack and so once again this means that I'm going to have to do some voice acting. So let us begin. Hello zombies, nice to meet you. My name is Herbert S. Huckleberry. Now, I have flown from London all the way out to Egypt to do a very important archaeological dig. Now, seeing as you have interrupted my dig, what I am now going to do is kill you all. Before we can add zombies, we have to do the game framework. There's no way around it. The game framework is going to spawn the zombies in for us. It's going to give the zombies more health as the rounds go on. It's going to spawn more zombies as the rounds go on. And we just have to do it before we move on to the zombies. So after a lot of searching online, I found the formula that tells you how many zombies should be spawned for a given round. The problem is that this formula just straight up doesn't work before round 12, and then it just works perfectly. So what I did is I just hard coded the formula if the round number is less than 12. Next up, the formula for how much health a zombie should have on a given round. Zombies start off with 150 base health, this increases by 100 every round, and then after rounds 10, it goes up by 10% every round. So that's the formula. So after writing those two long, hard, veiny formulas, and a bunch of other code that I won't bother telling you about. We're ready to spawn some zombies in. The problem being we don't have any zombies, so let's make some zombies. Now if we want to make zombies, the first thing we have to do is go shopping. I'm going to find some zombies, so we're going to grab this zombies pack v1. These zombies are great, and they have these things called morph targets, which allow us to make the zombie open their mouth. You might have seen me use that earlier on in the video. But anyways, I put the zombies in the game, and they look suspiciously human-like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the marketplace and I'm going to get these mocap zombie animations. Now, in Call of Duty, the zombies climb into the map through windows, but there's a bit of a problem. My zombie animations don't come with a climb animation, and to solve this I just made it so zombies jump into the map instead. We spawn them out of sight, then they walk to the jump location, and then they jump into the map. And it actually looks a lot better than I thought it would. Some might even say, scary. Looking online, I was able to find some zombie scream audio, but I need to get the zombies' mouths to sync up with the audio. How did I do this? Well, I created an envelope follower listener, fed that into a follower listener preset, created a sound cue, and then fed that 
Oh, you're not listening to anything I'm saying? Well, fair enough. The real question is, did this make the zombies look scary as fuck? Well, I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> I'm in danger! Here's the behavior tree for the zombie. It's gonna make the zombie chase after the player. It's really, really simple. And if we're within attacking distance of the player, we play this animation. And we have these animation notifies on the parts of the animation where he actually connects with the player, and that's when we deal the damage. Let me jump into the game and I'll show you. So this is the coolest shit. We can watch the zombie's behavior in real time. Look, he's jumping into the map, and now the right side of the behavior tree is active. Now he's in chase mode. He's chasing after me. And when he gets close enough, it's gonna play that animation. And if I'm too close when those animation notifies hit, when he swipes, I get hit. So it gives me a chance to avoid his attacks. Let me try dodge one here. There you go. Now I'll let myself get hit, and I'll show you I added a little death screen as well. That's pretty much the zombie logic, it's really really simple. Before I continue, I just want to mention that this video is sponsored by my Unreal Engine survival game course. It's on the Patreon now, and you get a 40 part series where together, you follow my lead and we make a multiplayer survival game with weapons, vehicles, and much more in an open world. And at the end of it, you get your own survival game, and I even show you how to deploy it on Steam so that you can play it with your friends. So the link for that is in the description. Simply join the Patreon and then you get lifetime access to the course. Now there's just no way that I'm going to make zombies without perk machines, so I found some models for the perk machines and then I added interaction components to them, which I coded myself. What you do is you set the amount of cash the player needs, and then the name of the machine, and then the code I wrote takes care of the rest. Another thing I did is in Call of Duty, when you buy Mule Kick, it lets you have up to three weapons. But I thought that's kind of boring. So in my game, I let you buy the perk up to three times, and each time you buy it, it lets you carry an extra weapon, up to five weapons. Same for Juggernaug, you can buy it up to three times for even more health if you want, but each time you buy it, it does get significantly more expensive. Oh, this Juggernaug stuff is bloody awful, but well, I do feel stronger. The perk machines are all very similar. They all play this drink animation, and then we attach the given perk bottle to the player's hand. Now Speed Cola doubles your reload speed, Mule Kick adds one weapon to your max allowed weapons, Double Tap makes the weapon fire 30% faster, Juggernaug increases the health on your health component from 100 to 250. So that's pretty much the perks, they're all very simple. While we're on the topic of my interaction components, I also use these to create doors. I use an Unreal Engine feature called Timelines to animate the door open when you interact with it. And while we're at it, we'll also create viable weapons using the same technique with the interaction component. I'll be honest here, coding Pack-a-Punch should have been really easy. I mean, all we're doing is taking the player's weapon and giving them the Pack-a-Punched version. This is way better than but this got way more complicated, especially once I started animating the gun to slide into the machine and changing that around and deactivating the machine while it's being used. All this stuff ended with a massive pile of spaghetti code. But in the end, I'm pretty happy with how the machine turned out. And the other thing that was kind of weird, because I'm, I'm a programmer, I don't usually do this, but I had to write a special shader to make these wheels spin around. These wheels are not actually spinning around, it's just the material on them that spins around, and it gives the illusion that the machine's actually spinning. And here's a look at the shader just on a plane, just so you can actually see how it's working. I created all of the original power-ups from the game, max ammo, insta-kill, and nuke, but I couldn't resist adding a new power-up of my own, so I made one called Big Heads. And it's pretty obvious what this does, but the point is that it makes hitting headshots really easy. The power-ups are really simple. They're literally an invisible sphere, and when the player walks into it, it grants the power-up. It took maybe one hour to code all of the power-ups for the game. I'm going to be honest with you guys, okay, if my code for the Pack-a-Punch looked like spaghetti bolognese, my code for the mystery box was a goddamn five-course spaghetti buffet. <laughs> okay, you really don't appreciate how complicated the mystery box is when you're playing zombies, but when you have to code it, animate it, remake the shaders, by the time I was done it probably took about three hours. 
But I did mix the mystery box up a little bit and I allow you to actually get attachments and max ammos out of it, which is something that wasn't in the original game. Alright, so maybe easter egg isn't the right term, but I'll be damned if I don't remake zombies and add some fun, extra content. So third person was something I played around with, and I decided to create clothing items that increase your health as well. Because Juggernog being the only option feels kind of boring to me. And here's an example of me getting a jacket item out of a mystery box. In conclusion, I spent 100 hours making something I'll never look at again. When I was a kid and life sucked, which it did suck, I wanted to go somewhere cooler, man, and I played video games. I got lost in these worlds. But now at 24, I lose myself in the exact same way. But now I'm creating the worlds. It all comes full circle, baby. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. And uh, have a great day, man. Have a great day. Thank you for watching this video.